let's go. It's a fabulous show. Alaska. I heard the Alaska. Hello everyone and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska. I'm Jeannie Green. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we travel to the Arctic and take a look at two governments, the Northwest Arctic Borough and the North Slope Borough as they come together for the betterment of their local citizens. I'll be back with the Arctic Economic Development Summit right after this. Hey everyone, is your home or office furniture showing its age? Let Scan Home and Office update your image. Albert's the expert. Give him a call, toll free. <laughs> he can create the perfect furniture layout in the space you have available. He can even do this over the web. Scan Home wants to become your rural home office furniture supplier. It's mine. They even have financing options. Stop in at the corner of 36th and Arctic. Mokai, the versatile, durable, environmentally friendly and fuel efficient watercraft that's fun and easy to own. The strong polyethylene hull withstands scratches and impacts from river rocks. The jet pump requires only four inches, allowing for shallow water access and the three gallon tank provides eight to 10 hours of use. The engine and jet pump can be removed with that tools in under a minute, making transport, storage an easy task. Mokai, accept no boundaries. Heartbeat Alaska is made possible by Kupik Carlisle Transportation, your full service transportation and logistics company. Heartbeat Alaska is also brought to you by Frontier Flying Service. Thank you Frontier for getting Heartbeat Alaska airborne. A special thank you to Scan Home and Scan Office Furnishings. And thank you, Alaska Commercial Company, for your support. The Northwest Arctic Borough and the North Salt Borough are two different boroughs, two different government entities in the north, but they have so much in common. Let's take a look at how they're coming together and sharing solutions for their problems. For centuries on end, the Inupiat people of the north have taken care of each other, fed each other, worked together, and lived in harmony with nature. that their ancestors passed down to them, the Nupia understood their surroundings, their purpose, and how to maintain the delicate balance between their culture and a continuously growing Western influence. Today, these values that have been the core of their lives are the very same values that are bringing two boroughs together. All of us that are from the North Slope Borough and the Northwest Arctic Borough, with two boroughs coming together, this is the best thing that ever happened to both 
on both sides of our regions. Welcome to the 2005 Arctic Economic Development Summit, the fourth summit of its kind held between the Northwest Arctic Borough and the North Slope Borough to strengthen relationships, explore economic possibilities, and establish guidelines for future development that will protect cultural, subsistence, and economic needs. Yay! The two boroughs are home to Alaska's premier resource development projects and potential projects including oil, gas, and mining. The summits provide a vehicle to plan for future development using the years of experience and knowledge accumulated by the people with regards to large-scale resource development projects. As leaders, we recognize that the economic decline we are experiencing is affecting all of us affects all of our families and all of our communities. We anticipate that the organizational unity resulting from the call of our people will help in easing some of the tremendous public pressures we face so that together we can forge ahead with an agenda for our people, by our people, and with our people. The local economy on the North Slope has shifted, with most of the North Slope borough's big capital improvement projects completed. The borough had moved from a CIP-based budget to a budget based on operations, maintenance, and the upgrade of facilities as they age. At the same time, the oil economy was in the midst of change. With advanced technology, Oil fields could be brought online with fewer, smaller, and less expensive facilities. The original Prudhoe Bay infrastructure was no longer generating as much property tax revenue because of its depreciated value over the years. The NSB could see that their oil tax revenues were beginning a long-term decline. With this shift in economy, the North Slope communities have felt the pressures of unemployment and economic stress. The NSB leadership is building partnerships and collaborating with the industry, local, tribal, and regional entities to train and develop the local workforce, raise new revenues, find cost efficiencies, and identify and develop new economic projects to maintain a strong culture and economy. When we look at the Northwest Arctic Bureau, we have a red dog mine that uh, has over 500 jobs. Of these 500 jobs, 54% are held by shareholders of NANA and or residents of Kotzebue. You know, we must continue to encourage and educate our residents so that more can take advantage of existing professional opportunities in our profit, nonprofit, school organizations, and as well as the Red Dog Mine. Times are changing, and they're changing fast. Property tax formulas are also changing, and Prudhoe Bay is pumping less than half of the oil and gas it, has, it was pumping 15 years ago. Anwar, even if Congress even decided to open Anwar, Anwar is not going to save us. A natural gas pipeline, everybody's talking about it right now, it won't even bail us out. And we don't know if it ever, if they will ever be approved, but the bottom line to those two projects, it probably will take 10 to 15 years at the most till we see some real benefits out of those two projects. If these projects ever happen, what they will do is to help slow down the decline in our revenues. They will not bring back the good old days that we're accustomed to. By working together, the Northwest Arctic Borough and the North Slope Borough are searching for ways to improve their quality of life, ways to bring economic sustainability into the villages, ways to ensure a future for their children and their children's children. Sustainable economic activities come from the private sector business that creates jobs and fill the need in the marketplace. A su sustainable economy operates in a circle. A 
business produces a product or service that responds to a need. This, needs, this need attracts customers who buy the product or service and generate revenues for the company. With these revenues, the company employs people to keep producing the product or service. It's a continuous loop. People who have participated in the summits realize that they must focus on foundational issues such as healthy communities and quality education. And most importantly, there must be a shared community vision if they are to be successful in strengthening families, communities, and schools. <laughs> Traditional values, including speaking of the language and practicing traditions, have become the cornerstone for building healthy communities. <laughs> For the Inupiat language and culture, we heard it very clear. Think Inupiat, speak Inupiat, be Inupiat. Inupiat speakers must speak and have our language be around us at all, the at all times. We must be teaching and sharing what we know about our culture and our traditions. Schools cannot be the main teacher of Inupiat language. Homes should be the primary source for Inupiat language learning. Schools are more of a support system. OTD. Collaborative partnerships have formed, bringing employers and service providers together. They are focusing on career development in the schools, reaching children at a younger age, and strengthening the job and training services in both regions. So much of the time we try to import people, and we shouldn't be importing people. We should have our own people take the responsibility. While both boroughs have vast experiences with large-scale resource development projects, they realize that there needs to be more emphasis on economic development in the villages. The summits have provided the opportunity for the village corporations and tribal governments to provide strong leadership in planning for economic development in their villages. We need to promote stable income sources, uh, providing jobs uh, as, a, as a village uh, corporation that we're charged with. We need to make sure that all the businesses we're faced with, uh, we you know a lot of us are into um, AD programs uh, that don't benefit directly the with the jobs here locally. So we need to stress the point with our, our, P our companies that the money that they make out there need to come back to the village so we can provide jobs and sustainable economic opportunities with the fund that they make and the profits that they make for our benefit of our people. And what we hope to accomplish is really strengthening our collaboration collaborative efforts. We have learned from the leadership in the past, the elders that have been involved up until now, and many of them have passed on. And even at the local level, a lot of us remember the leaders that were involved, that what allows us to make progress and move forward is when we work together. And so we want to really uh, continue to do that and also strengthen that as we move forward. Moving forward, um seen some changes happen within UIC and you'll see more changes. Village leaders broke into groups to brainstorm ideas and share feedback on current developments and plans for future village economic sustainability. As a community we need to be able to approach that very carefully that we don't sit there and point fingers saying you need to be more responsible. The two boroughs are seeing the benefits of working together come to life. The Northwest Arctic Borough and the North Slope Borough have been working on ways to address the high cost of energy for some time and have made significant progress. A number of ideas have been posed as solutions such as the creation of a large bulk fuel purchasing pool. The two regions could use their buying power to reduce prices and coordinate the logistics of distribution to users.
electricity and telephone co-ops were used as models that might help manage the bulk fuel resources. Other ideas for village energy included wind generators and utilization of waste heat. Some efforts have been made to develop the potential for both of these resources. <laughs> Perhaps one of the most talked about topics that remains as important today as it was years ago is maintaining the traditional way of life. From the 2001 summit, there were a number of public comments about strengthening policies regarding development and the protection of the resources. Some of the goals were enhance or strengthen policies with respect to development, enforce regulations and stipulations, study the impacts to marine mammals, stringent monitoring, assure agencies have comprehensive plans for wetlands and watersheds, the use of traditional ecological knowledge with scientific knowledge in environmental impact studies, and direct involvement with subsistence issues at the local level. We're still the same people. Both boroughs have reviewed their ordinances and are making changes to address the people's concerns. We look around here in Barrow, we just don't see, I don't think we see enough of our local, our young kids coming back and filling those positions. So that's, that's a good point. That's something we need to uh, work hard on. Yeah, that's an area where the board really discussed uh, from the from our UIC side too. Is that uh, we have a bunch of uh, folks that are we've hired to run our businesses, but uh, in the meantime, we also have a shareholder development program. And what we failed before is that uh, we don't have a place for them to be when they get to a, a point where they need to take over. So what we've done is made our managers know that uh, they're here for a purpose of uh, developing our shareholders. And there's going to be a, they all know they're going to have, there's going to be an exit point at some point. Local hire is an important aspect of maintaining economic sustainability. It assures that the money made by community members stays in the villages, supporting the villages and providing more opportunity for economic growth. In addition to discussions about how to provide a sustainable economy for the villages, concerns were shared about their current financial stability. So, when you look at uh, Laurie Shirk's Lodge, he started with a small dream, and that was to take people out fishing. And that's how the communities in our region can really thrive, is to take part in the hunting and fishing. But I think the best way to do it is to do it with your IRA so that there's some control, that it doesn't uh, compete with your subsistence resources and your subsistence hunting. One other thing that we, we, we're doing now that provides money into our communities is tax preparation. We learned last year uh, from a, about three individuals that came in from Anchorage to uh, help do taxes for our people. We found that a lot of our people did not, how to, did not know how to take advantage of uh, the earned income credits or other such credits like child care and child credit. So we captured a lot of money for these people, and we intend to do that every year. It provides money right back into the income, into the family's income. Flying in Alaska? Fly Frontier, the official airline of Heartbeat Alaska. Frontier is expanding again. They've added new routes to Nome, Kotzebue, and the surrounding villages. As you can see, Frontier is now really covering Alaska. So the next time you fly, try Frontier. Frontier offers quick, convenient check-in, low fares, and service direct to many of the villages. Frontier Flying Service is the official airline of Heartbeat Alaska. Make it your official airline, too. The trees are right when heading to uh, 0 to 20. Okay, and what side traffic are you making? We want to try to touch down at the beginning portion of the runway. Yeah. 
We are here today to give you a presentation about New York City and how drugs and alcohol affect the town and the students. Two students from New York City, a North Slope community, took the initiative to bring forth some of the obstacles they face as youth growing up in a rural village. We are focusing on the youth because the youth is the future. Us we want to say and what happens in our future we don't have we don't want to grow up with our parents doing drugs and alcohol these young ladies had the courage to voice their concerns and take the steps necessary towards building a healthy community like the many other people who came forth with concerns ideas issues and solutions the 2005 Arctic Economic Development Summit was the fourth event of its kind People came together willing and eager to address many different issues and to collaborate, plan, and begin the process of strengthening the necessary foundation to sustain generations yet to come. By working together, the two boroughs are returning to the ways of their Inupiat ancestors, returning to their core values that have kept the people of the Arctic strong for centuries, returning to the true meaning of being Inupiat. Uh, this elder on the radio reminded everybody, and I don't have his name, but this elder said, let's not be victims of change, but architects of our own destiny.
thank you everyone for joining me for Heartbeat Alaska, Native news and information. God bless every single one of you and join me again next week, won't you? For more Heartbeat Alaska, Native news and entertainment from the North.